of Reign of Giants playing as Wilson. Uh, we are talking about how to survive the new seasonal challenges that occur in this new DLC. Last three videos I talked about how to deal with the abundant rainfall that occurs in spring. Today we're going to start talking about how to prepare for summer because just like winter in the old DLC, or I'm sorry, in the old vanilla version of the game, you have to prepare or you're not going to make it through. So I got my basic base set up here, I got my crock pot, I got my science machine, I got my alchemy engine, I got about three farms going, have my lightning rod to protect me from the lightning that happens all the time in the springtime because it rains. My uh, little guy's feeling hungry, so let's, uh, let's cook him up some fish that I found when I was off camera. Found some of the pigmen beating the crap out of some merms, and they gave me some fish, so that's always good. It is the evening of day four, so we've got a couple days left until summer starts. I believe summer starts on day... It's either 16 or 20. Let me know in the comments which that is, but we'll figure it out. Alright, so today I want to talk about structures. The things that I think you should have built at your base to help you get through the summertime. Uh, the first one is a siesta lean-to, which is a tier 2 science thing, and this, like the tent in vanilla, will actually let you sleep through the difficult part of the day, only this one, it will sleep through daytime rather than the evening and night. So let's find that. It's under structures. Here too. Now, this is not absolutely required any more than the tent is, but I do think it's useful if you need to restore sanity because it does that, and it also helps restore health if you're having problems. So let's see if we can find it here. Where did it go? Where did it go? It lost it all. You know, I'm not sure what tab this is on. Let me tab over to the wiki and we'll uh, find out here. Obviously, I don't use this too often or I'd know where it was. Let's see here. Oh, it's on the survival tab. Okay, that's why. Sorry about that. Let's continue our game. Okay, the Siesta Lean 2 requires three ropes, four boards, and two spider silk, so it's not horrendously expensive. I'm just going to spawn some in with uh, the Too Many Items mod here. But it does have a drawback in that it is only um, good for six uses, so you want to be conservative with how you use it. Only use it when you need to. I don't think it has durability when you're not using it, though, so it will just stay there if nothing happens to it. Alright, let's find our ropes here. I, I know I could use the console, but that's just kind of a pain in the butt to type, type it in three times, and I don't know the command for spawning multiple items. Where are you? See, every time I start recording, I can never find anything that's right in front of my face. Just to embarrass me. I actually think I do have the spider silks from dealing with the nest that was close to my, my base earlier. So let's see if I've got stuff for now. I do. So let's prototype that. I'm actually going to put it way over here in the summer part of my base. And we'll explain more about that as we go on. So there's my siesta lean to. Alright, so that's an optional item. Uh, something that is not optional, however, is a fridge. Um, during the long summer, your food is going to spoil really, really quickly unless you have a way to keep it cold, so you're definitely want, going to want to get a fridge. That, I believe, is in food on Tier 2. It takes one gear, one cut stone, and two gold nuggets. Um, you can get gears from digging up graves, they're a rare drop, but they do happen, or by taking on one of the uh, clockwork monsters from the chest parts of the uh, of the board, or the chessboard parts of the map, I'm sorry. 
And that's not something that I do a whole lot because those are pretty tough monsters, but with some basic uh, armor you should be okay for Robo Dog, as Sips calls it. Though I'm not sure what the real name of that, that item is. But anyway, while I get sidetracked, let's go ahead and build a fridge. I'm just going to spawn in the stuff that I need for it because I am cheating for inspectional purposes, which I'm okay with. Alright, where is it here? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So yeah, there they are. The gears. And the cut stones. And I think I have enough gold already. I'm picking it up while I was out running around. Do I? I think I do. Alright, so let's build a fridge. Put that guy over here. Maybe over here. Or Icebox, as the game calls it. Okay, so we have nine slots here, and you can use those to keep your food fresher. So I'm going to store the stuff I got from my farms in there right now. Let's go ahead and replant these. Because since it rains a lot in the spring, you're going to want to be using your farms to their fullest advantages. Especially because the rabbit holes are collapsed and you can't get bunnies right now. Big glass rabbit hole. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so those are some structures that are useful. Um, you'll also need a source of cold. Um, in the winter time, you remember from vanilla, you could stand by a fire to warm up. Well, there's something in this DLC called an endothermic fire, which actually cools you off as opposed to warming you up. Late, it will be dark soon. It's fine, listen. Let's just uh, give you another board to keep the fire going for the night. And we'll talk about the endothermic fires. There's two versions of them. Uh, an endothermic fire um, is like the campfire, except that it um, draws heat away, uh, it will burn out. If you don't keep fueling it, just like the campfire does, create ashes, which will then blow away. Uh, an endothermic fire pit will um, work just like the regular fire pit does. You just have to add fuel. So that's always useful to have. Uh, the electrical doodad I don't have any of, so let's go ahead and make them. How do we do that in science? One cut stone and one gold. Fine. That, that. That, that. Okay. We need two of them, so let's go ahead and make those. I think I've made them already, have I not? No, I have not. Science machine to build a prototype. Wilson says, good thing it's contained. That's correct, because otherwise the fire could spread. What do I not have that I need? What do I not have that I need? Oh, two gold nuggets for electric blue dad. Well, that's a pain in the butt. Oh well. Not like it's a big hardship for me. <laughs> Alright, if I remember correctly, I also needed niter of them, which are pretty common drops from stones, if anybody watching this doesn't know how to get niter. So they're actually a lot more useful than they were before. Oh, um, regular endothermic fire requires, because I forgot to mention what it, de what it takes. Uh-oh. Right in again. The umbrella. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, endothermic fire needs two niter and... Three grass. Your endothermic fire pit needs two niter, four cut stones, and two electric doodads. Please forgive me for being a little scatterbrained and not mentioning those things. And these are tier two science items, so you will need an alchemy engine for them. So we need a few more cut stones to make our endothermic fire pit so I can show you what it looks like. And I'm going to build it fairly far away from my main fire. 
because I don't want to have to stand by it and actually get cold during the spring springtime. If I do that, Wilson will start to freeze because he's already kind of wet and chilly in the springtime. So let's go ahead and see if we can build this here. La la la. And Wilson's hungry again. Let's build this guy actually right over here by the siesta. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And if I were to stand by it, my temperature would drop. I don't want that to happen. So let's eat some cooked monster meat. You can eat cooked monster meat. It does have a health penalty. But if it's cooked, it's I think it's only one health point. So he's doing pretty good. It'll bring up his hunger. So, All right. So those are the structures or the things at your base that I think you need to have for the summertime and they will definitely help you get through the hot season. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it for this video. Next time we'll be talking about um, how to protect yourself from the summer heat, just like you need to in, protect yourself from the cold in the winter. So let's just get my fire built up a little bit before I say goodbye so my guy here doesn't die from Charlie and I'll have to start all over. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.